What's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to be creating another editable vintage concert poster that will go in my Etsy shop. I'm gonna be using this poster for inspiration and I'll be starting in Illustrator and then finishing the final effects up in Photoshop. Before we get designing, please remember to hit like and subscribe and also click the bell for notifications to be notified of all future content. Now let's get started. All right, so I'm right here in Illustrator and like I said, I'm gonna be using this Led Zeppelin poster as inspiration. Uh, for this and I, I, I use the word inspiration loosely because it's pretty much going to be an editable version of this poster. So um, let's go ahead and get like, you know, some of the basic elements down. One of the things I'd like to do is nail down um, what font I'd like to use. So for something like this, I would go with, you know, something that's a little bit more typical of like a screen printing uh, font or, or something like that. Something a little bit more bulky, something that looks a little bit more hand designed rather than completely refined, you know. So uh, there's, there's a, a few choices that I've got in here. Um, and I, I'm trying, I'm trying to make it to where it doesn't look too, you know, like, like I'm from Nashville. So there's obviously going to be some, um, you know, some influence there. Like, you know, if I see a lot of concerts, uh, up in Nashville, um, but I'd like to find something that's a little bit more universal, um, for, you know, just kind of something that can apply to, um, all kinds of shows. So let me see here. And then also you want to make sure that it looks timeless, you know, like for something like this, you know, like they, they've got that, they've got that, you know, like that hand created uh, type of font and everything, but it, it definitely looks, it definitely has a, a more timeless look to it. So this one is nice right here. It's a little bit condensed um, for what I'm looking for, but I'm going to see if I can, um, I'm going to see if I can find a different one, like, you know, at least a second option here without wasting too much time trying to trying to find a font uh, that works i mean you know we can go down the font rabbit hole uh all day long so there's um there's one that's a little bit more nashville like you know it's kind of got that western type of that country western type of look um but i'd like to see if i can at least grab one more option and uh if you're a designer yourself you know that you can definitely go down a rabbit hole when it comes to looking for uh fonts and you know, the whole typography thing. It's, uh, it's funny, actually, somebody, uh, several years ago asked me, um, what my favorite aspect was about graphic design. And I said, said typography. And she just didn't, she didn't get that. You know, she was like, why do designers always say that? Because, well, it's, it's, it's what we use to communicate. <laughs> it's the number one thing that we use to communicate. So, you know, it's, it's obvious. So, okay, so I like this one here, actually. Um, even though I don't, I'm not a big fan of those serifs on the on the eyes themselves, but I think that, um, I think that overall, th this, uh, this would be a good, uh, like a good universal uh, font to use. And if I need to do any kind of uh, stretching with it, it looks like it would be a little bit for, uh, maybe a little bit forgiving, not too much. I don't think any more than 120%. So, okay, so I think I'm gonna go with that one and let's go ahead and set it to optical since we'll be um, copying, um, copying that, um, that type, uh, those properties and everything like that. Okay, so uh, this document that I've created here is uh, 18 by 24. So this, will, this right here will be adapted onto this. If you can see this right here, uh, this is probably a little bit more like 16 by 24, but we're going to, I'm just going to carry this over to 18 by 24 because that's, uh, that's the size that my printer offers. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit. I usually don't go below 50. So I'm going to lock this down uh, so I can just kind of grab some of these shapes right here. And I'm using the pen tool uh, for this one. And um, for something like this, you know, you want to kind of, you know, like you don't want to go completely straight up and down. So no holding uh, shift keys here. So just kind of bring your cursor over here, you know, and then also make sure that this is not perfectly a straight line all the way across. So uh, it just gives it a little bit more of that hand, that, you know, that hand designed uh, quality uh, and look to it. So, and uh, when we bring this into Photoshop, I'll actually be applying some effects that help to reinforce that. So, okay, so there's my shape right there. And uh, really, I'm just gonna go in and get the rest of these shapes. So let's go ahead and grab this right here. And the good thing about the pen tool is that you can just, you know, you can just kind of mimic these uh, these shapes right here. 
and then I'll do the same thing with this. And uh, what I'll do is I'll group all of uh, I'll group all of these by color. So we've got uh, orange shapes right here, and those will just kind of sit behind this. So you've got you have this like yellow uh, type of color, uh, orange, and then black um, as far as the shapes go. And then what we'll do is once I bring it into Photoshop, I'll actually group uh, I'll group everything together by color so that I can quickly change those colors. Like if, if somebody wants to, um, you know, if they don't want yellow and orange, they can they can choose their own colors. And I can go in and directly edit those colors exactly how I want to. All right, so for something like this shape, uh, I'm gonna hit the N key on my keyboard and grab the pencil tool. So I'm gonna double click on this. I'm gonna set this to um, about uh, about right there, like not all the way to accurate, but just one uh, just one over. That way it's not too jagged and rough around the edges. So I'm just gonna grab the pencil tool and just go around here. Um, you know, like this doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, um, but you know, it's just kind of, kind of gives you an idea of, of what to do right here. So uh, there are multiple ways to accomplish this. Um, one, uh, one thing that I've done in the past is I've, uh, just drawn a whole bunch of circles, um, you know, overlap them together and then grab the, um, grab the unite tool and just kind of combine all of those shapes together. So, uh, you can do it that way. Uh, this is not the only way to do it. That's a good thing about, uh, illustrator, uh, and Photoshop is that there are multiple ways, um, of doing it. I just really like this one because I, I really... Oops, and my calendar just fell off my desk. Um, so I like this one because it gives it a little bit more of like a handcrafted quality. So just go in and grab these anchor points, join those together, Command J on your keyboard, and then I'll just kind of do something like that. All right, and then we'll go in. These don't necessarily have to be connected at this point. Um, I'm just really doing it to make sure that I uh, don't leave anything unjoined. All right, so grab this here and we'll just kind of start at the bottom. And then when, once we're done with tracing uh, this, like this overall gener general shape and everything, once we're done, uh, we'll grab all of the shapes that we have, or it looks like in this case, two, two different shapes, and we'll just combine those together. Okay, and then we can overlap right here, and then we'll just connect those, okay? And then as far as this goes back here, we've got, you know, like the, it probably does extend uh, behind that image right there, but that doesn't really matter because the image is going to be there. Okay. So for now, um, let's grab these, combine them together, and then just leave them as a stroke for now. Okay. And we'll go in and grab this one. And these are basically, you know, like basically we're just creating sections for blocks of text. And we'll just do the same thing here. And the good thing about doing this, uh, as far as the editable uh, posters go, that's that's really what I special specialize in on my Etsy shop is um, editable um, music-related posters. So you know, I what I do is I set up all of these files so that I can easily go in and change all of the content uh, in there with really just a few clicks. You know, obviously there's, you know, there's some adjustments that need to be made. I have to go in and update the image, uh, go in and make sure that all the text fits because, uh, you know, like what I put down isn't necessarily what, uh, what my customers will want in those particular spaces. So they may want, they may want a space that says something different. So I go in and I, you know, and, and I make sure that I edit. Um, edit all those things and make sure that it all fits together and I always make sure that it looks good before I send off a proof Okay, all right, so there are all of our like basic um, Like overall basic shapes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab all of these and move them over here And so this is kind of an idea of our layout. So I'm gonna go um, one inch in one inch in from the like the top uh, uh, top left, and then also uh, like basically just one inch in, in general. So, um, and then I'm gonna size this to where it's one in, just a one inch margin all the way around. 
So this right here, so like you grab all of the different shapes right here, um, and I, I'm on 18 by 24, so it's one inch in, and then it's 16 inches by 22 inches. That way we have an exact margin all the way around um, our entire structure, and then that'll just be the background. So now I'm gonna go in and add in some type and what I've done in the past is I've done, I'll just kind of give you a demonstration of what I've done in the past. What I've done in the past is I'll like, you know, just kind of draw, draw like a shape like this, do like Saturday, bring it to the front, uh, shift command, right bracket, if you're on a Mac, which you should be. <laughs> um, and then grab these two and then do like the envelope distort. So command options, oh wait, sorry. This should be up front. There we go. Okay, Command Option C. And what you can do here is um, that text right there is still editable text. The only problem is that I found with, with doing it that way is that it can tend to really distort the text depending on what is inside the box. So if I've got something that is, you know, that's a defined space for taking up a short amount of text. If I put in something that's long, then it really, really distorts that text. So I would rather go in and have full control over the text that I'm going in and adding, adding and editing. <laughs> All right. So, um, so uh, what I've got right here, and this is just, uh, just for, uh, just for setting up the actual poster. Um, I'm not gonna base this on this Led Zeppelin poster. I'm gonna base this on my very first poster, uh, sorry, very first concert that I ever went to, which was Richard Marks. <laughs> um, I saw him when I was six years old. Uh, so this is actually gonna be designed uh, for that Richard Marks uh, concert. Sorry, there we go. And I have all the information in front of me, that's why I keep looking down. <laughs> so, um, Okay, it was Saturday, October 7th. And what, what I'll do is, you know, like we'll get these, uh, all these different elements in place and then we'll just make sure that we're still within that, um, uh, that margin that we're doing here. And actually, I think I might make these the same size. It'll probably look best that way. Okay, bring this over here. And I don't remember exactly what time the concert started. I was six years old, but I'll, I'll, we'll just say, we'll just go with 8 p.m. You yeah, know, that's what's on the, the current poster and that's totally fine with me. Okay, so let's align that to there. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the align, align to glyph bounds, both, both of these are checked right here. So it's gonna take into account the actual glyph of the text, not, not the bounding box right here. So it aligns this line right here, and I'll just get, kind of give you a visual. It aligns that line right there, this edge, with the edge of the actual type, rather than uh, looking at the bounding box. Which I'm so I'm so glad they added that as a feature. It's a great feature. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. Align to the artboard to the uh, the to uh, top right uh, corner, and then we'll bring it in. Um, sorry, bring it in one inch and then bring it down one inch. That way it's exactly, um, uh, th those are our margins. So, uh, let's say that the, you know, that the concert takes place on the 23rd, you know, those are very wide letters. Well, easily, I would just go in, kind of bring this down a little bit, bring this in over here, align this right here, and then just kind of, you know, just make some adjustments. And everything there may be some adjustments that need to be made to this shape or something like that but you know that's that's the kind of stuff that i that i make sure that i plan for is it, you know is just knowing that um that these these text items will be will be edited depending on the depending on the poster i'm making all right so now so richard uh, good old richard marks he performed at nashville riverfront not river font, river front. <laughs> um, okay, we'll center that. And then I'll bring this, just kind of bring this up a little bit. Get the letting nice and tight. Okay. And then we'll just kind of set it inside of that shape. And when you're doing stuff like this, it's a lot easier to work with it all in black and white. Um, you know, just, or like, you can just call it like working, uh, working at a prototype, and then afterward you can go in and and, uh, and add the colors and, and things like that. But it's easy; it's a lot easier to just, you know, to focus on the actual content itself. 
um, that way you can that way you can go in and you know just kind of change the colors later. Okay, so in concert, and then I'll do same thing here, a full two hour show, not sajo. There we go. I wonder if um, that might work better down here. Like we're definitely gonna um, adjust the font size for this because it's just not as important, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and grab, um, I like these stars right here. So I'm, uh, what I'm gonna do is, and, and I kind of like how, I really like how imperfect they are. So I'm gonna just do an exact tracing of these uh, stars so that way we have, you know, something that's a little bit more distorted and then we can go in and add, um, add some little effects here in Illustrator to kind of, um, to help reinforce that. I actually kind of like this better. I think, I think it works better like this. That way you can put the stars, uh, right here. And then let's go grab that second star. And you know, if you're doing something like this, you can easily, you know, just go to the star tool and everything and, you know, and create your star. Um, but I, you know, I like the more imperfect look. It definitely adds to that, you know, that concert, uh, that concert poster uh, feel to it. It just, it just works a lot better. Okay, so let's go in. Um, I'm gonna experiment just a little bit with these and see what, uh, see what I can do with the roughen tool. And as you can see, like by default, it really, really roughens it up. I don't want it to be nearly that rough. So like maybe something like a half a percentage or maybe 1% or something like that. Um, no, I don't want it to be smooth. I definitely want it to be corner. And maybe something like this, you know, like we, we still have that, you know, like you can still tell that it's obviously a star, uh, but it just looks a little bit rough and jagged, you know. All right, um, so basically I just like to work from the, from the top down and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just make a placeholder that just kind of tells me that this is where the image goes. And then copying and pasting in front, I'm gonna switch to a switch from uh, fill to stroke and make our little frame right here. And then just bring this over. So it's kind of sitting about right there. I like that, okay. All right, so let's go back to our text. Um, we will do Richard Marks here. And for the bottom, looks like I'm gonna have to make his last name a little bit bigger, which is fine. Actually, not a little bit bigger, a lot bigger. And we'll just kind of bring his name down uh, right here. And what I like is I, I do like uh, how they have uh, have right here listed these uh, the names of these songs. So I'm going to do the same thing uh, for Richard there. And uh, let's see, we'll say uh, we'll do should have known better. And this was right after his new album, his his new at the time album, uh, Repeat Offender came out. So um, it did have um, right here waiting. And what's cool about this is that you can go in, um, you know, like if there's certain uh, certain songs that you want shown right here, you know, I can certainly do that. You know, I can put whatever two songs there you want. All right, so let's grab this right here. We'll just kind of do the same thing that we did with the star. You know, I think I'm gonna do this instead. So we'll just kind of go like this, make an actual shape out of it. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. There we go, let's just start over. It's a lot easier. Sometimes it's easier to just start over. Okay, and then add some lines in right here. And we'll grab this and just kind of move that right there to make sure that those lines connect up with each other. 
and then do the same thing here. And what I'll do here is just kind of just slightly move it over so that it's um, it's overlapped. And uh, I will do this right here, move this over. Since you're working with strokes, you gotta you know you gotta make sure that you get all of those lined up. Okay, good. So now we can grab the whole thing, expand. Oops, object, expand the appearance. That way it's all now a fill and we'll combine it together. Okay. And we'll do the same thing with applying the roughen uh, right there. I, I like that. And we'll just kind of stick that music note probably right there. And then we'll add uh, right here, waiting. Should have known better is definitely one of my favorite songs by him. But I would say that probably my favorite one is Don't Mean Nothing. That's always been my favorite. All right. Um, let's stick, uh, since we have a little bit of text left over uh, right here, or space left over, let's add some text right here. So, um, celebrating his new album repeat offender in stores now I miss hearing that on the radio don't you <laughs> in stores now and uh, and and also going to uh, going to record stores to get your concert ticket yeah definitely miss doing that that was that was just as much fun. Of course, you know, there was also the waiting uh, waiting part, and then you'd get all the way up to the front of the line, and they were sold out. Don't you know? All right, so one thing that, um, that I do remember about this is that it was a free concert. So free concert, uh, general seating. We'll just kind of... At this point, I'm just kind of putting together some text that I think will, will go well with, uh, with the poster itself. Uh, you know, like that's kind of some relevant information here. So, um, concessions available, and there were fo uh, fireworks that night. So, fireworks to follow. And this second line, we'll just make that a little bit uh, smaller. And I'll go over to the paragraph here, and we'll just kind of br uh, bring up bring up some of that spacing. Oh wait, I don't have to do that. They're not all they're not on the same same text box. Okay, good. <clears throat> all right, so center is this centered? It's not centered, but we'll just center it just to make my life easier. And we'll just kind of bring this up a little bit. That's a little bit too low. I'd like to bring it to about right there. All right, so since we have this uh, shape right here, like it's kind of, you can see that it, um, since we made it imperfect, I'd like to maybe try rotating it a little bit. Not much, maybe like half a degree or something like that. I think that looks good. Um, and then for this right here, we'll just kind of put some like general small print in, uh, information. So we'll just say like Riverfront Park Nashville, Tennessee, and I don't like the two commas there, so I'll do maybe a bullet. I, th I like that. I think the bullet looks good. Okay. All right. So there, right there, is our uh, is our layout. Okay. So now all we have to do is start copying uh, these uh, just uh, color. Sorry, color sampling these colors. Um, and it's really just kind of as a starting point. You're not locked into these colors, uh, like I said earlier. So um, swip, uh, swap them over and just grab this, send all of them to the back. Um, and then we will need to change, uh, change that color because that's supposed to be a, a black shape right there. So we'll swap that and then we'll grab the text, make sure that it's all the way forward. and then change it to white. And then we'll grab the same orange right here. We need to send these two orange guys to the back. Much better. All right. This kind of reminds me, uh, like just the just the overall uh, look of this reminds me of like those uh, those old grocery store ads. Um, 
I, I think it's the colors, uh, the, but the colors and the typography, they really kind of help uh, work together. Sorry, I had a technical malfunction there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is grab all of this and copy it, and now we're gonna move over to Photoshop and paste it into Photoshop as a smart object. Make sure you do that. Make sure you just just about, you know what, there's not really a downside of, of not placing it as a smart object, so just do it every time. And so what I'm doing here is I'm create as I'm dropping all of this in here as one as one overall uh, object, so that I can get this uh, the image right here uh, the image place uh, uh, placeholder placed, and then I'll come back and then paste uh, paste it all again minus the image placeholder, and we'll and you'll see why in just a second. Well, it's it's mainly because the image itself needs to be. Uh, adjusted it, it needs to be adjustable separately from the rest of the elements so that's really pretty much it okay so now I'm gonna grab everything again minus that one shape okay so copy it now align it good now we can delete this one so now our image placeholder is is still right there um, and actually, uh, I just realized that I was supposed to grab uh, them by uh, grab the individual color elements. So we're gonna grab everything that's that color. Now paste. You know what? There's a little trick to make your life easier. Make a Make a rectangle with no fill and no stroke. And whenever you uh, copy over your elements, make sure that that is selected as well. That way you can just center, center to the document. Oh, for some reason that's not working for me. Weird. Oh well, no big deal. Um, okay, so now we've got all of the yellow ones. So let's call this layer yellow let's grab all of the orange ones and we will call this layer orange and now all of our black ones black shapes which is just the one okay and that needs to be directly above uh, orange so that orange can show in the background. And instead of trusting in Photoshop's alignment <laughs> to get it like, well, it's not really Photoshop's alignment. It's my, it's, it's the design. So it's not really a big deal. Okay. So now we will just, we'll just call that one black and, and, and that one we won't change. Okay. So now we should be able to delete everything. And now, Let's grab all of the text. I like to keep all of the text together so I can go in and just edit uh, the text portions and then the colors I leave to be edited in, um, in Photoshop. And then the colors here all stay the same. One thing I want to do is let's select all of the fill colors. And I, want, I don't want it to be 100% black. I want it to be like maybe 10%, something like that. Uh, so that way, whenever uh, uh, we're gonna be applying effects to this, so I wanna make sure that those effects are shown through and you can see them in the text. So let's grab everything that is pretty much a black, uh, black element, black text, black um, symbols, all of that stuff, and then also this um, stroke, that, that uh, the uh, image border. There we go. Okay, so now we will bring this right here. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see. This right here is sitting. Oh, dang it. I forgot to grab that one. There we go. Okay. Now we'll try this again. Oh, that's weird. Perfect. 
All right, so now let's center this up. I swear I'll get this in a minute. <laughs> I didn't mean to, to copy over that one uh, black shape. And for some reason, it deselected that text. I, I need that text. The joy of working with smart objects. You want to make sure you get it all correct. Okay, perfect. Looks like we are in good shape now. We're not. I forgot that image border. Okay. Perfect. I'm so much better at this when I'm not talking through things. <laughs> I promise. There we go. Okay. When I'm not talking, like, you know, because I'm focusing on the talking uh, aspect of it, making sure that you're not bored. Um, <laughs> so um, that's that's always a bit of a challenge. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here to the text la uh, layer, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name name it. So all text and then uh, photo placeholder. Okay. So now, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is go into blur and Gaussian blur on the all text uh, layer right here. So this will help to um, kind of reinforce that, like that vintage look. It, well, basically what it does is it just kind of blurs it a little bit and you'll see the, the advantage of that once we start adding in uh, textures and, th and things like that. All right, so let's, um, let's do this. Let's go grab uh, an image of Richard Marks. And then we will drop that in. And what I'd like to do is find one from the 80s. <laughs> uh, let's see, a nice large one. I like this one. And we don't have to worry about that, that watermark right there. So we can just, what we can do is we will, uh, I'll put this over the photo placeholder here and then clip it, ma uh, make it a mask. So that way we can just hit transform and enlarge it. And we'll just bring it to about right there. Maybe a little bit less. So that way you can fully see the guitar. And uh, to, to help give it a little bit more of a vintage uh, look, obviously what we need to do is we need to uh, do like you know uh, some kind of like either a threshold or a posterize effect, and we need to clip it just to the picture of him. So let's see, something like that maybe. Let's just kind of see how that looks. This will look a lot better once we once we add in our actual um, effects, like our, our layer effects and things like that. So that one that one's cool, but I want to see what posterize looks like. Sometimes you get a little bit more, a little bit of a better result with posterize. Um, not bad. I think I like that one. Uh, the six levels right there, and then we'll add a gradient map to it and then we'll adjust some curves right here i'm not going to spend too much time adjusting this particular uh one because every every time every time i get um every time i go in and get one uh, like uh, every time i get an order this you know that this will need to be uh updated so and it, it's gonna obviously depend on the image itself so i'm gonna grab all of these right here let's see i don't think we need that threshold layer. Actually, I think I'll leave it there just in case I want it for future ones. So grab everything here, group this together, and we'll just call this group photo. You can collapse that Gaussian blur effect. All right, so um, I have found a, a few different textures and I just kind of put them in this one uh, Photoshop file right here of different textures that I want to layer on top of uh, this. <clears throat> and we'll just try We'll just kind of see what it all looks like. I'm gonna put this on top of everything. Um, so as you can see here, um, you can see it's really kind of faint actually. I think I may go in and uh, just kind of brighten the uh, the text, everything that's black. Just gonna go, uh, go in and select all, uh, uh, so, uh, same fill color right here. And we're just gonna bring this up. So that way we can actually see these effects. 
in the text itself. Just, you know, it, it really helps to, to give it more of an aged look. There we go, much better. So, so you can actually see these uh, these effects that are laying on top of this. And what you're seeing right now is 100% view. So, and I'll just show you what it looks like when you take off the Gaussian blur. It just really makes that text super, super clean. And it just, it just doesn't look authentic. So when you add in the Gaussian blur, it really adds a lot of authenticity to the overall um, poster itself. So um, that looks good. And I'm gonna grab this one as well. This is actually from a different poster that I uh, put together, but it worked really well. Uh, the, the, it worked really well for that combination. That combination of layering these uh, that also had a white background, so um, so that makes sense that it would that it would work well for this. We are getting a little bit of a blue tint uh, right here, and I'm actually not wanting that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the photo gonna go into the photo placeholder and I'm gonna hit uh, hold command and click right here and then go back up here to this paint texture with that selected and I'm gonna click on um, uh, add layer mask okay so right here all right sorry I should have inverted so invert first <laughs> I think I did there we go. So what it does is it'll actually just, it, it'll apply it to everything except for that one little area. And we also need to, while, while I'm thinking about it, go into the uh, photo placeholder and go into uh, Gaussian blur. Turn it up to probably about a five right there. So it's not like this hard, this hard edge around everything. Okay, so now that we've got that done, now let's zoom back out and just kind of see how everything looks. I think everything is looking good. I want to place this overall texture here at the very top and just kind of see what that does to it. Okay, I'm really liking that a lot. And so what that what this is doing is just, just kind of um, giving a little bit more of like that paper type of texture and then here on the background we have a solid white background but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like we'll go up uh, go all the way up to white right here Photoshop doesn't like me right now because I'm throwing a lot of things at it um, and then go into probably like around here this uh, this particular hue and then go slightly wait I'm gonna go probably about right there and then just go slightly to the right with the uh, saturation. Okay. And just kind of see how that looks. Need a little bit more, looks like. And what that, what that does there just kind of gives it a little bit more of an aged look. Let's see, let's adjust the, actually the exclusion is really cool. That definitely uh, gives it more of a vintage and aged look. I think we need to adjust that, this black shape right here. And we'll just make it the same, same color as this. That 10% black uh, right there should be should be good. Okay, save it. Come back into Photoshop, and now we should see those. Yeah, there we go. Much much better. Much better. Okay. All right. So uh, some parts of these are a little bit washed out, but I'm actually I'm actually okay with that. Um, you know, like I, I think that if you were to you know like if you were to get this poster you know, back during 1988, <laughs> when this uh, when this concert was put on, uh, and, and you've had it for a while, then it's definitely gonna, uh, it's definitely gonna have some aging to it. Okay, so let me um, add in a couple of hue and saturation um, layer styles. And I'm gonna make sure that I clip them just to those particular colors. So now, if somebody wants yellow changed to blue or like a bluish purple or something like that, then I can target just uh, just the yellow areas and then I can do the same thing here to the orange. So if somebody wants like a blue and pink or something like that, then I can go in and just target those or if they want blue and purple. Um, 
you know, you can you can target just those uh, just those colors, um, and then go in and change all of the text. Actually, I think I'm going to make this a little bit more of a gold color. I like that. May I actually get this printed out. Oh, that's nice. I like that. That that right there definitely looks like you know like an aged orange. You know, and you can also do something like this. You know, turn all the saturation all the way down. So. But, um, okay, so here it is. Uh, here is the fully editable uh, vintage style concert poster. And uh, this is available in my Etsy shop. Uh, so I'll actually li uh, list, uh, link that down in the description below so you can go directly to it. Um, and it could be custom tailored to any concert that you've been to or uh, like a dream concert or, or, or whatever. Like I can, I can make this into whatever you want. I can make it say whatever you want. So go check it out. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching along as I made that vintage style concert poster editable file for my Etsy shop. Um, looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys do with that or seeing if anybody if anybody wants it. <laughs> so I'll link it down in the description below. Uh, that way we can customize it uh, to however you want. So thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and also click the bell for notifications to be notified of all new content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.